dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Vera Ralston in The New World Look, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now, here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week the top names in motion pictures join us for your entertainment. Our star is lovely Vera Ralston, the title of our story, The New World Look. We'll have the curtain for Act One right after this important message from Wendell Niles. Think of this moment, friends. No matter what our army uniform has been, the buff and blue of revolutionary days, or any of the soldier or airman's garb, down to the smart, trim-fitting uniform of today, that uniform has stood for freedom and democracy. Yes, and for preservation of peace throughout the world. That is the tradition of your army and your air force. The young men wearing that uniform today are carrying on that tradition. They deserve the pride you feel for them. And you can be proud of your Army and Air Force today and every day. Now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of The New World Look, starring Vera Ralston as Rena Rambovia. <laughs> For the past several years, the New York theatrical columnists have tried desperately to learn something of the private life of Rena Rambovia, the European stage star who became the toast of Broadway immediately after arriving in this country. Rena, however, like another glamorous continental star, has remained mysterious and aloof, aided by her manager, Roger Carson. Who is it? Roger. Just a second. Come in, Roger. I'll be ready in a minute. Kolsky was waiting for me when I came off stage. They delayed me. Why? What do you want? Confirmation of a romance for his column. The man was someone I've never heard of. Well, now, if you'd marry me, that'd stop all these rumors, Rena. Please, Roger. We went over that a dozen times. Someday, perhaps. Well, I can wait. You ready? All ready. Good. We're going to try a new restaurant tonight, Rena, the Province Club. So? Oh, it's wonderful. No orchestra, no columnists, and a chance for me to propose again without being interrupted by someone who knows you. A little more wine, Rena? No, thank you, Roger. You don't mind if I have some, huh? Oh, please do. Rena, have I done something to offend you? Of course not, Roger. You seem so distant and preoccupied. The waiter captain disturbs me. Why? What did he do? Nothing. It's, it's just that he seems strangely familiar. Oh, well, it's nothing to be disturbed about. Those guys change jobs all the time. You might have seen them last week at the colony or 21 or almost anywhere. Perhaps, but I don't think so. I wish I looked at him a little more closely when he seated us. Well, that's easy to fix. Waiter. Uh, yes, monsieur. We'd like to see the captain, please. Oh, yes, monsieur. Is something wrong, the food, the service? Oh, no, 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 everything's fine. As a matter of fact, I'd like to congratulate the captain. Well, thank you, monsieur. I shall send the captain immediately. Good. Well, after we get rid of this captain character that's bothering you, Rena, maybe you'll be ready to listen to me pop the question again, huh? Perhaps, Roger. Hey, Roger Carson. Hmm? Uh, well, Jack Chandler, what are you doing here? Well, could I see you a minute? Well, sure. Uh, excuse me a minute, will you, Rena? I'll be right back. Well, Jack. I'll you wish to speak to me, madame? Your Highness. I was sure I recognized you when you seated us. I beg your pardon, madame. What in the world are you doing here? I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, perhaps you don't remember me, but I could never forget you. I'm Rina Rambovia. I'm honored, Miss Rambovia, and deeply flattered by your belief that we have known each other before. Oh, but you helped me to my first big part in the State Theater at home. Surely you can forget it. No one who has ever met Madame could ever forget, I'm sure. Well, Rena, is the captain the guy you thought he was? 
It, uh, it was a very flattering mistake, monsieur. My name, madame, is Nicholas Alexander. It, it doesn't seem possible that two men could look so much alike. <laughs> Rena, surely the captain ought to know who he is. Yes, of course. Is there anything I can do for you? No, thank you, captain. Very well. I'm very sorry to have been forced to disappoint Rena Rambovia, but be assured, madame, I shall never forget this meeting. Nor shall I. Thank you for your trouble, Captain. If you don't mind, Roger, I, I'd like to go now. What? Miss Rambovia? May I come in your... Mr. Alexander? Oh, but of course. Thank you. This is a very great surprise. How did you find my little apartment? I went back to the province club and and told them that I was a very dear friend of yours in our homeland. I see. Won't you sit down, please? You, you came here for a reason. Yes. Why do you deny your identity, Your Highness? I thought I had convinced you and your escort that I was merely a captain of waiters, Miss Rambovia. But I have a photograph of you taken when you were captain of the palace guard. You autographed it for me after my first starring role. Oh, it was an excellent performance. You do remember. There are certain things one can never forget. Why did you deny that you're Prince Nicholas, Your Highness? There are also things one must forget. Time changes everything. Nothing can change the fact that you're a prince of the royal house. It is no longer a royal house. And the new government thoroughly convinced me that there is very little future in the king business. You've been threatened? Oh, that is all behind me. Now, I really much prefer being plain Mr. Nick Alexander. I can't believe it. It's very simple, really. As captain of the palace guard, I was just one of many extremely useless members of society. As captain of my waiters, I served the public. And they say I do it rather well. Oh, but surely you can do something else. Oh, yes, yes. I've been a riding master, a skiing instructor. But I, I much prefer my present position. And the others seem much more uh, romantic. That is precisely why I gave them up. A student imagining herself in love with an instructor can present quite a problem. Does uh, no one ever fall in love with Captain of Waiters? Oh, never. We seem to be regarded as a little above a menial and a little below a gentleman. And you, of course, have never fallen in love? Yeah. Under the circumstances, it would be quite hopeless, if you know what I mean. I, I think I do. It's much the same as a commoner loving, say, a prince of the royal house. Quite similar. Well, I, I better be running along now. Well, thank you for coming, and, and please keep my secret, even from your escort. That won't be difficult. He thinks I'm insane to have thought that a prince would be serving as a captain of waiters. Well, goodbye, Your Highness. Oh, please call me Nick. Whatever you say, Your Highness. Nick. I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> Do you like that, Rena? <laughs> Love it, Nick. For a moment, I had a feeling that you were running away from the world successfully. <laughs> Why do you close your eyes? So that I may see you again, as I always do in memory, leading the palace guard. Oh, that's all behind us, Rena. Here. Here, may I help you down? Yes. Here. Thank you. Nick, it just doesn't seem possible. What doesn't? That you and I are a prince and a commoner. How many times must I ask you to forget that, Rena? How many times must I tell you I can't? Why do our conversations always lead to this? Because it's always between us. Oh, but you're right. Let's talk of something else. Of course. Your new play. Well, when do you start rehearsals? Next week. Oh, so soon. And we won't have many more days together for some time. I... I've been thinking of that. The days will be very lonesome, then. Terribly. I'll miss these precious moments that we've shared. And I will live them all in, in memory. Oh, Rina, if the world would but stand still. I dream of that. No past, no future. Just forever, now. <laughs> Hi, Rena. Hello, Roger. Ready to go to dinner? 
I, I'd rather not go out, if you don't mind. Oh, good. I'd much rather stay here anyhow. Although I did plan on taking you to the province club to propose again. Oh, please, Roger, let's not talk about that. Hmm? Hey, what's wrong with you tonight? Nothing. You ill? It's nothing a doctor could cure. Well, why don't you tell me all about it? There's nothing to tell. I, I guess I'm just being very foolish, really. Well, you certainly are being very mysterious. I'm sorry, Roger. It's Nick. Nick? You mean, you mean that head waiter who's been teaching you to ride? Yes, that head waiter. Are you trying to tell me that you're infatuated? Oh, I suppose that's it. Well, now, isn't that a little ridiculous? Oh, of course. Oh, Roger. Oh, oh you, you poor kid. Here, come on. Come on, cry on Uncle Roger's shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Feel better? I... I guess so. Yeah, that's a good girl. Now, look, darling, you're tired and your nerves are on edge. I, I think I'll leave you now, hmm? I'm afraid I, I wouldn't be very good company. Sure, but you'll get over it right away. Of course. Darling, between the two of us, we'll find some way to make you forget this, Nick. Good evening. It's a pleasure to see you again. Is it? Of course, as a friend of Miss Rambovia. That's I... why I'm here. I, I beg your pardon. As a friend of Miss Rambovia. I'm afraid I'm very dull-witted, Mr. Carson. Just, just what do you mean? I want you to stop seeing Miss Rambovia. Oh, no, really? As an actress, she's a highly emotional person, and you've made her very unhappy. I have made her unhappy. That's right. Silly as it seems, Miss Rambovia has developed an infatuation for you. I'm deeply honored. Yeah, well, you certainly should be. To my knowledge, you're the first man to whom she's ever given a second look. Not only honored, I'm flattered. Now, then, what is your attitude toward Miss Rambovia? Really, Mr. Carson, Oh, it's, I... uh, it's a legitimate question, all right, because if you, if you do have any feelings for her, I won't insult you by offering you money to stay away from her. That's very wise. Why should I stay away from her under any circumstances? Because you're no good for her. I see. Are you in love with Miss Rambovia, Mr. Carson? Certainly, but she's not interested in me. No, it's... I'm not here as a rival, Nicholas, but as Miss Rambovia's manager. Oh? She's got a great career, a great future before. That is, if nothing stops her. And you think I would interfere with her career? I know you would. Look, I don't want to sound like a snob, and, and if Rena weren't so definitely in the public eye, I wouldn't say anything about it, but it just isn't good business for her to be seen around with... A head waiter. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And thanks for making it easy for me. This wasn't a very pleasant job. I... Now, if you'll agree... How can I avoid it? I would never do anything to hurt Miss Rambovia, either personally or professionally. I shall not see her again. We pause briefly from our story, The New World Look, starring Vera Ralston for an important message from our government. It can be said safely and proven that more young Americans are choosing Army careers today than at any time in our nation's history. Since July 1947, almost half a million young men have decided to stay in the Army, rejoin the Army, or sign their new enlistment contracts. These young Americans made up their minds that they would combine service to their country with advantages in education and security that cannot be found in civilian life. In the new peacetime United States Army, you can find travel, education, good pay, food, clothing, quarters, and medical care at no cost, and the finest technical schools where, as you earn, you learn and increase your skill and earning capacity while your opportunities for advancement and a fine career are unlimited. Yes, more men choose Army jobs today than ever before. Discuss the details with a recruiting officer at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station immediately. Our curtain rises on Act Two of The New World Look, starring Vera Ralston as Rena Rambovia. When Rena, the glamorous continental star, recognized the province club's captain of waiters as the fourth, she had lost her heart and found on happiness. 
certain that she, a commoner, could never hope to marry a prince. And when Rena's manager, Roger Carson, learned that the man he knew only as a captain of waiters was responsible for her unhappiness, he persuaded the captain to agree never to see Rena again. Coming? Nick. Miss Rambovia. What have I done? Done? What do you mean? Why are you avoiding me? I, I, I didn't know that I was. I've been extremely busy, Nick. Too busy to answer my calls, my notes. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about that, but it wasn't possible under these circumstances. Under what circumstances? Well, to be frank, I... I found myself falling in love with you. Oh, Nick. And since that obviously could lead only to unhappiness for both, it seemed better not to see you again. But why? How could that lead to unhappiness? Surely, my dear, you must realize that we could never marry. Oh. Thank you for explaining, Your Highness. I... I shan't bother you again. Oh, please, Rina, if I have hurt you, it is but to save your happiness. Please don't. I should have known that dreams are best undreamt. Oh, please. Goodbye, Your Highness. Goodbye. Good luck. <laughs> Where have you been? When your maid let me in, she said you'd just gone for a short walk. I went to see Nick. Yeah. Oh. He didn't even invite me in. Well, he was probably trying to protect you. If someone had seen you entering his apartment. That wasn't it. I've been a very foolish girl, Roger. Living in a dream world. And now the dream is over. Well, maybe it's best, Rena. Dreams are seldom practical. <laughs> Dear Roger. Always the practical manager. No. No, not always, Rena. I, too, have my dreams. I hope your dreams will come true. You're the one who holds the answer. I? Sure. You know my dream is you. Oh. But we'll talk about it later, huh? When you've had time to forget this disappointment. And uh, you could wait so long? I'll always wait, Rena. And no. hope. You're a friend, Roger. But I want to be much more if you'll just let me. It wouldn't be fair to you, Roger. I'll take my chance on that. But, Roger, I... I don't love you. At least not the way I should. <laughs> you know, there are almost as many kinds of love as there are people, Rena. All I want is the right to be near you, to, to protect you, to share your life. Just give me that, Rena. That's all I ask. It's not enough, and... and I can not give you more. Time changes everything. That's just what Nick said. Time changes everything, except things which count. Hmm. The answer, then, is still no. No, Roger. But if you want me as I am, knowing what you know, the answer is yes. <laughs> Well, just one more week, Rena, and you'll be Mrs. Roger Carson. It doesn't seem possible. You want to change your mind? Of course not, Roger. Oh, you're tired, aren't you? I should be, but I'm not. I'm just completely confused. Between wedding rehearsals and play rehearsals, I'm never sure whether I'm practicing to be a bride or a murderess. Well, for heaven's sakes, get it straightened out before we say I do. Oh, Roger, after swearing that you agreed to anything that would make me happy. Madam, your future husband is a man of his word. If you want to become a widow by your own hand, I wouldn't think of interfering with your pleasure. You're an idiot. <laughs> How can I help it? I'm in love. Is love then reserved for idiots, Roger? Oh, no, it's also open for those who love us. Oh, I, I see. Hey, have you noticed all the publicity our engagement is getting from the columnists? Could it have escaped the notice of anyone? <laughs> I should say not. Winchell, Fiddler, Sullivan, Skalski, they've all given us a lot of space. Too much. Oh, you can never get too much publicity, Arena. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping Walter Lippmann will discover it has some far-reaching international significance. You're incorrigible, Roger, and very good for me. Mm, I knew you'd realize that in time. Hey, what do you say we go out on the town and celebrate, huh? At midnight? Well, can you think of a better time? No. Okay, then, practically, Mrs. Carson, leave us go.
understand, Rena. You didn't object when I suggested coming to the province club. I know, Roger, and I'm not blaming you. I agreed because I thought I would prove something to myself. Ah. And you didn't? Not what I hoped to prove. Uh-huh. Your pardon, please, monsieur. Hmm? Oh, wait a minute. There must be some mistake, waiter. We didn't order champagne. Compliments of the captain, monsieur. The captain? Well, it's very thoughtful, I'm sure. He asked me to extend his congratulations. Oh, well, please ask him to come by, will you, so that we can thank him. Very good, monsieur. Oh, Roger. Why did you do that? Well, I couldn't very well have done less. Rena, we've got to settle this once and for all. There is no room for ghosts in our new home. You're right, of course. But I... Well... But what? Nothing. Congratulations, Mr. Carson, Miss Rambovic. Well, thank you, Captain. Would you join us in a toast of the future? Oh, I'm deeply honored. This is a night we should all remember. Within a week, we will all be starting our new lives. Oh, are you getting married too, Captain? Oh, no, no. I have no plans for marriage. Now, nor in the future. But I, I'm leaving the province club. Well, we'll miss you, Captain. It's very kind of you to say so, Mr. Carson. No, I, I mean it sincerely. I'm sure you do. Where are you going, Captain? Oh, one place is not less lonely than the rest. Well, it seems to me you have a pretty good thing here, Captain. Financially, it could hardly be better, Mr. Castle. Will you let us hear from you, Captain, wherever you go? Well, I am a very poor correspondent, Miss Rambovia. Uh, over five months ago, I received an invitation from my government to return home. I haven't answered it yet. Of course, it was an invitation to be executed. Executed? Oh, I have no intention of accepting the invitation. Oh, but here, yeah, I'm taking up your time when you, I'm sure, have, have so much to discuss. Well... Oh, no. I'm sure you have. Well, goodbye, Miss Rambovio. Perhaps at some more favored time we'll meet again. Till then, take all God's best. Goodbye, your... Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye, Mr. Carson. I'm sure you'll take very good care of I'll do my best, Captain. Well, Rena, here's to our future. Yes. Our future. Oh, Roger. Rena, what are you doing here? I had to see you, Nick. May I come in? What do you think it's wise? You know, Roger might not like... Roger knows I'm here. Oh, well, please do come in. Roger and I had a very long talk tonight, Nick. We both learned many things. Please go on. Roger said that you did not avoid me because you were afraid you were falling in love with me, but because you thought our being seen together might be detrimental to my career. It could have brought you very unfavorable publicity. Do you think that I would care? Oh, Rina. Roger also told me that, that you do love me. Oh, Roger's... Quite a talker once he gets started, isn't he? Well, was he wrong? Would it be right for me to tell you, since you're engaged to marry another man? I'm not engaged to marry another man, Nick. You're not? Roger released me from my promise tonight, after he saw us together at the province club. But I, I, I can't understand it. He said he knew then that I was not merely infatuated, that I really love you. Rena, my darling. Oh, Nick. And you're willing to marry a captain of waiters? Anything in the world, my dear, if, if it's you. Where are we going from here, Nick? Going? Of course. You said you were leaving tomorrow. Oh, but you, your, your new play. Oh, they'll find another actress. All I want is a chance to be with you. Just plain Mrs. Nick Alexander? Yes, Nick Alexander. Of course, to myself, I'll... I'll always be the captain's wife. The curtain falls on the final act of the New World Look. Our star, Vera Ralston, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Want a future unlimited? Want to fly with the best? 
and find out if you can qualify for the United States Air Force Aviation Cadet Training Program. Find out if you can be one of the best, an aviation cadet. Basic qualifications are these. You must be between 20 and 26 and one half years of age with two years of college or the ability to pass an equivalent examination and physically fit. If you fulfill these conditions, you may become an aviation cadet. Then after a full year's training, you'll receive your pilot's wings and a commission as second lieutenant in the Air Force Reserve and orders to active duty with beginning pay up to $336 per month. Outstanding graduates receive regular commissions immediately in the Air Force. So act now. Visit your nearest United States Air Force base or recruiting station at once. Find out if you can become one of the best, an aviation cadet. Now back to our star, Vera Ralston, and our producer. Vera Ralston's success story, one of the most amazing in Hollywood, is not even exceeded by fiction. I wish we had time to discuss some of her career highlights. Her snub of Hitler, her Olympic ice skating experiences, the flight from Nazi invasion of her native Czechoslovakia, or landing a nice review spot in New York, and her subsequent rise in professional ice skating, and finally, a Republic Pictures contract, then stardom. Thank you very much, Fifi. Uh, can't we just mention some of the things that need to be done, Fifi? You bet we can, Vera, starting, say, with that fine Christmas charity party you had. Well, as you know, every year I give a party and invite all my friends and acquaintances, charge them $10 a person, then use the entire amount of money to buy food and clothing for people I know in England, France, Italy, and Czechoslovakia. <laughs> sort of a Vera Ralston Marshall plan. <laughs> yes, on a, on a small scale, unfortunately. But this is something I've been doing ever since the war, as soon as I could get packages into Europe. And doing it throughout the entire year, too. Your home is like a branch post office. <laughs> That's what it's called, but it's worthwhile confusion because... So many need so much, C.P. How true. And since you went to Europe last summer, you really know what needs to be done. I certainly do. I wish you lots of luck in this, Vera. And now, what's your latest from Republic Pictures? Is it Angel on the Amazon? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure the picture is in all the theaters now. In this co-starred also George Brand, Brian O'Hearn, and Constance Bennett. Now about you. Who are you starring next week? Next week, Vera, and ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to present Gloria De Haven in a highly dramatic story titled Perilous Journey. You won't want to miss it. Oh, that sounds grand. I'll be sure to catch it. Thank you very much. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Vera Ralston. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Gloria De Haven and Perilous Journey. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Vera Ralston appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Bill Hampton, with music under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>